So he brings the saying of the author, وَهُوَ مَعْرِفَةُ اللَّهِ وَمَعْرِفَةُ النَّبِيِّينَ And it is knowledge and awareness of Allah and knowledge of His Prophet. Shaykh Al-Fawzan said in explanation of this, He's saying, وَهُوَ مَعْرِفَةُ اللَّهِ He's saying, and it is knowledge and awareness of Allah. <coughs> Shaykh Al-Fawzan commented, How does the servant come to have knowledge and awareness of his Lord? He raises the question, how can this be attained? How can a servant how can a servant come to have knowledge and awareness of his Lord? Then he answers the question. He knows of him. He comes to know of him through his signs and his created things. So from his signs, from his ayat, is the night and the day. And from those things which he has created is al-shamsu wa al the sun and the moon, as will be explained, insha'Allah. As, as will be explained later on, insha'Allah. He knows of Allah by means of his signs within the creation. His ayat al kawmiyyah he knows of, of his Lord, of Allah, through his ayat al kawmiyyah through his signs within the creation. And his ayat al quraniyah and the ayahs of his Qur'an. Both these types of ayahs, both these types of signs. The signs which Allah has placed in the creation, and the ayat which are the ayahs of the Book of Allah. If he recites the Qur'an, then he knows that Allah, the Perfect and Most High, He is the one who created the heavens and the earth. And that He is the one who made subservient whatever is within the heavens and the earth. And that He is the one who gives life and gives death. And that He has full ability over everything. And that He is Ar Rahman, the extremely merciful one, Ar Rahim. The one who bestows mercy. So the Quran provides knowledge and awareness of Allah, the mighty and majestic. And that He is the one who bestowed all favors upon us. And that He is the one who created us and gives us provision. So if you recite the Qur'an, then you will know your Lord, the Perfect and Most High, by way of His names and His attributes and His, act- and his actions. Bi asma'ihi wa sifatihi wa af'alihi. So if you read the Qur'an, you will come to know about your Lord, your Rabb, He, the Perfect and Most High, by means of His names, His asma, and His sifat, His attributes, and his afar, his actions. And if you look into the creation, into the kaun, then you will know and be aware of your Lord, the perfect and most high. That he is the one who created this creation. And who made this creation subservient. And who caused it to proceed by his wisdom, his hikmah, and his knowledge, his own, he the perfect and most high. This is al-ilmu billah, this is knowledge of Allah, the mighty and majestic. So Shaykh Rozan mentions the two types of ayat, two types of sign, by which a servant can become aware and have knowledge of his Lord. The sign of the ayat, which are the eyes of the Qur'an, by his reading the eyes of the Qur'an, and by his looking into the signs, the ayat which Allah has placed within the creation, the created things that He has made. Then He moves on to the second part, the second phrase, وَمَعْرِفَةُ نَبِيِّهِ And knowledge, so this knowledge, al-ilm, which is knowledge and awareness of Allah, and knowledge of His Prophet. Shaykh 
Hazan said, وَمَعْرِفَةُ نَبِيِّهِ A knowledge of his Prophet. He's saying a knowledge of his Prophet. Shaykh Hazan explained, He is Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Because he was the Muballigh. He was the one who conveyed the message from Allah the Mighty and Majestic. He is al wasifa He is the intermediary between us and between Allah, the Mighty and Majestic, with regard to conveying the message. And just a very important side point here which some of the people of knowledge make, that the saying of the people of the son of this matter here, that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is the intermediary between us and Allah, then the saying of the people of the Sunnah is greatly different here to the saying of the Sufis, the saying of the extreme the Sufis and the grave worshippers, the saying are very different. And with regard to the people of the Sunnah, then we say that the Prophet Muhammad وسلم, is an intermediary between us and Allah with regard to conveying the, the revelation. But with regard to worship, there is no intermediary between us and Allah. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa is not intermediary. We don't take him as an intermediary between us and Allah. Whereas the saying of the Sufis and the like is the opposite. That they say with regard to revelation, they claim that they get revelation, that sheikhs, our sheikhs get revelation direct to their hearts. From Allah direct to the hearts of our sheikhs, they say. With no intermediary. Whereas with regard to worship, they take the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa as intermediary. And they say we worship him, we, we make requests and worship. We direct it towards him to get to take to Allah. <coughs> opposite to the saying of the people of the Sunnah. So just a side point which some of the people of knowledge make about this matter of the wasita. But the saying of the people of the Sunnah is that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is a wasita, is an intermediary between us and Allah with regard to conveying the revelation. With regard to worship <coughs> between us and Allah. We worship Allah most high directly. Then, back to what Shaykh Hazan said, so he said, so he is the intermediary between us and Allah, the mighty and majestic, with regard to tabligh, with regard to conveying a message. So therefore, it is essential that you know him. I mean, because of that fact, it's essential you know the Prophet sallallahu You have knowledge and awareness of him. It is essential that you know of him. You know who he is, and you know his lineage, his nasab, and you know his city, his balad, and you know that which he, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, came with. That you know how the revelation first came to him, and how he established the call to Allah, the mighty and majestic in Mecca and in al Madinah, That you know the seerah, the life history of the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, even if it is in a bridge form. <coughs> in the night, in a bridge form only. And then Shaykh Razan mentions, the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he is Muhammad ibn Abdullah, Muhammad, that is, the son of Abdullah, the son of Abdul Muttalib, the son of Hashim, the son of Abd Manaf, all the way to the end of the noble prophetic lineage, which goes all the way back to Ibrahim alayhi salatu wassalam. And you know how he lived before he was raised as a prophet, before the Bitha. You know about his life, how he lived before he was raised, raised as a prophet. And how the revelation, the wahi, came to him from Allah the Mighty and Majestic. And what did he, alayhi salatu wassalam, do after he's been raised as a prophet? You know that through study of his seerah of his life, he sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And it is not befitting for the Muslim that he should be ignorant of the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. 
taught, how can you follow a person when you do not have knowledge of him? Yeah. This cannot be comprehended. How can you do, how can you do it to that? Following you know, the duty which is upon us to follow the Messenger, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, the Shaykh raised the question, how can you follow a person when you do not have knowledge of him? This cannot be comprehended. Then the saying of the author in the main text, Shaykh Islam ibn Abdul Wahhab, Islam, and awareness or and knowledge of the religion of Islam. That own knowledge is, it's not just been referred to here, it's knowledge and awareness of Allah and knowledge of His Prophet. And knowledge of the religion of Islam. Shaykh Razan commented, is saying, Ma'arifat al-Din al-Islam, knowledge of the religion of Islam. He said, which is the deen, the religion of this messenger, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Indeed, it is the religion of Allah, the mighty and majestic which he commanded his servants with and which he commanded you to follow and you are required to follow it so you must have knowledge and awareness of this deen, of this religion and Islam is the religion of all of the messengers, the Rasul Every messenger, all of the messengers, their religion was Islam, with the general meaning. And Shaykh Razan he explains here that the word Islam has a general meaning and a specific meaning. So with the general meaning, Islam is the religion of all of the messengers. He said, so everyone who followed a messenger from the messengers, then he is a Muslim, one who submits in Islam to Allah, the mighty and majestic. One who submitted to him, <coughs> and one who singled him out with all worship. This is Islam with the general meaning, that it is the religion of all of the messengers. So Islam is, and then he gives the extremely important definition of Islam, which we've had before, but it's important that we keep hearing this, the like of this, because it's important. So obviously, in the people like of these days, when people who don't know, they start define, defining Islam, and they say Islam means peace. As it becomes the people who that, that's what the word Islam, the religion of Islam, what does it mean? It means peace. It means it's a word of peace, and we're peaceful people. That's the meaning of our, our religion. So to correct this then, we see the like of the definition of Shaykh Bhavzan quotes here. He said, so Islam is al-Islam al-Hua, al-Islam lillah bit-Tawheed, wal-Inqiyad lahu bit-Ta'ah, wal-Khulus min al-Shirk wa ahlihi. That Islam is to, sub- to submit to Allah with Tawheed, and to yield or comply to Him, with obedience and remaining free of the shirk and his people. That is the definition of, of Islam, our religion, which is not Islam. As the Sheikh said, in the general sense. Then he said, that that is the death was the religion of all of the prophets. Then he said, as for Islam with the ma'na khas, with the specific meaning, and what's referred to in the text here, when we're told here, awareness of the religion of Islam, what does that mean? So he said, as for Islam with its specific meaning, then it is that which Allah sent his Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam with. In the specific religion with all its details, which were sent to the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Not the religious laws that were sent before, but the specific that were sent to Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. That's Islam in specific meaning. So he said, 
As for Islam with its specific meaning, then it is that which Allah sent His Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam with. Since after the sending of the Messenger sallallahu alaihi wasallam, then there is no religion except for His religion, alayhi salatu wasallam. And Islam is confined to following Him sallallahu alaihi wasallam. So it is not possible for a Jew to, to now say, I am a Muslim, or a Christian to say, I am a Muslim, after the sending of the Prophet ﷺ, if he does not follow him. So Islam, after the sending of the Prophet, is following him ﷺ. He the Most High said, and he quotes the ayah, قُلْ إِنْ كُنْتُمْ تُحِبُّونَ اللَّهُ فَأْتَبِئُونِ يُحْبِبْكُمُ اللَّهُ Surah Al-Imran, the third surah, ayah 31. With the explanation, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was told to give the address, say, if you people truly love Allah, then follow me. Then Allah will love you. Al-Fazan said, this is Islam, with its general meaning and with its specific meaning. The first meaning of the Shafi'i, when he gave the definition, this applied to the, the religion that all of the prophets were upon. And now the Islam here, with its specific meaning, is the same thing, except that which religion which was sent to the Prophet Muhammad with the specific details that were sent to him, not to give to the prophets before. The religion which Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam came. But after his sending, Islam is restricted to being following him. Then the saying of the author, rahmahullah, comes bil adilla with the proofs. With the proofs. So the first matter here is knowledge, which is knowledge and awareness of Allah and of His Prophet and of the religion of Islam with the proofs. Shaykh al Fawzan commented upon this by saying, he's saying the adilla with the proofs. He said, la bi taqlid. Not due to taqlid, blind following. But rather with the proofs from the Quran and from the Sunnah. This is own, this is knowledge. And he gives a very famous, or a few famous lines of poetry. He said, he said, Ibn Qayyim mentioned defining knowledge, which is, what is true knowledge. He said, Ibn Qayyim said, in al kafiyat al shafiya the famous poem, Al-Ilmu qala Allahu qala Rasuluh, qala al-Sahabatu hum ulu irfani, ma al-Ilmu nasbuka lil khilafi shafaqatan bayna al-Rasuli wa bayna ra'i thumlani. You'll find some different wordings of this in different places. This is one of the basic wordings. Al-ilmu qala Allahu qala Rasul. Knowledge is Allah said, His Prophet said. Qala sahabatu hum ulu irfani. The companions said, they are the possessors of knowledge and awareness. Mal-ilmu nasbuka bil khilafi safahatan. Knowledge is not that you foolishly raise up a disagreement. Between the messenger and the opinion of so and so. And this is something that we are in extreme need of the like of this. But sometimes we forget, or many of us forget, what is Ellen, what is knowledge. Knowledge is not full answer or full answer. This is what is knowledge. And knowledge is that which Allah said, that which his messenger said, the companions said. That is what is Ellen. And knowledge is not what is commonly found amongst us these days. And when someone is faced with knowledge, they say, but, but Shaykh Samsa says something different. Of course, I have authentic hadiths quoted, and they say, but Shaykh Samsa says something, something different. So we need to be aware of the like of this matter here. That knowledge is, Allah said, His Prophet, His Messenger said, the companions said. They were the possessors of knowledge and awareness. Knowledge is not that you foolishly raise up a disagreement between the Messenger and the opinion of so and so. Then Shaykh al Ghazan continued, This is what is ilm, what is knowledge. Knowledge 
is the knowledge contained in the Kitab, in the book, and in the Sunnah. As for the sayings of the ulama, this is the matter where many people get a wrong understanding or a wrong practice, Sheikh said, Sheikh Fazan said, as for the sayings of the ulama, the scholars, then they only explain and clarify the speech of Allah and the speech of His Messenger, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And they may contain, or some of them may contain, a mistake. And the adillah, the proofs, are not the speech of the ulama. Al-adillah to laysa kalam The proofs, so I ask you about adillah, there's no, no, no use quoting the same as the as the Shaykh said. Proofs are not the speech of the ulama. Rather, the adillah, the proofs, are the ayahs of the Qur'an and the poetic ahadith. As for the speech of the ulama, the scholars, and it explains and clarifies that. Except it is not a proof in itself. This is the first matter. It's the first matter, the first question, the first matter. And it is the foundation. The Shaykh Rahimahullah began with it because it is the foundation. And one should begin with aqidah, creed and belief and with the foundation in learning and in teaching and in calling to Allah the mighty and majestic. Aqidah, creed and belief should be begun with because it is the fundamental basis and it is the foundation.